Thank you for joining me today for one method of painting a portrait with oil colors. This is the picture that we will be painting today. Okay, on my palette, um, I have a zinc white, a titanium white, a raw sienna, yellow ochre, a burnt sienna, a cad red, or cadmium red, a Parisian ultramarine, French ultramarine blue, and a little bit of black. For me, the way that I like to do this is I'll take, let me slide this photo open. I'll take the photo, and like right now, it's just a photo off my iPad, and I like to lay a piece of glass over top of the photo um, and then when I my initially start mixing, I'll take some of my whites and start mixing a flesh tone. And I try to mix to where I'm going to get a medium tone um, for this. I had grabbed my zinc white instead of my titanium white to start mixing this with. I should have grabbed my titanium. Titanium white has more it looks like pigment way too in it. Paint in here, way um, too and it's pigment. less opaque. So it's and so when I'm out. first mixing the colors, I usually should use my titanium white to get my color balance and then go over to my zinc white when I'm wanting to split down and want a little bit more opaqueness to something if that makes sense. Okay, so that's a little bit better of a pinky kind of a flesh tone, but to me that's still way too dark. So if I went over and, let's cut it down a little bit more before I do that. So if I'm gonna come back over and take a look and then I'm gonna just take this and dab it and see where my flesh tone ranges in there and how I have to adjust my flesh tones. Um, and because this is a digital picture just off of a Facebook page, I'm not going to get um, as good quality as a better photo. Okay, in this section, you can kind of see where I've mixed up, you know, a, a base flesh tones. And then I'm gonna take one up a little lighter, and then I'm gonna take one down into more of the blue tones and gray tones. Um, so here, Okay, I did mix up the three that's going to be kind of my base of my skin tones. This one has a little bit of blue in it, and of course my base, and this one leans a little redder. I will use all three of these along with mixing them in with my other color palette as I'm working. Here, you can see the little dots that are on here. What I did, I can get my iPad to come back on is all three of those skin tones, I put it on the glass and then laid it over the photo to be able to see where my skin tones are gonna fall, what I'm gonna use for where. I don't know if, let's see. So here is my base. I can go a little deeper with that. Of course, my cheeks, which are you know a lot lighter and then eventually we'll go lighter with that my shadows back in this direction, and my shadows in the creases. So that kind of gives me that I'm on the track for that particular photo of my skin tones. Okay, now 
I'm just going to grab some of the yellow ochre, the little bit of the black. It looks like I've got a hair in my brush. I used a Fano just giving me a dark marker base. Um, in white in order to sketch on my face onto my canvas. And this dark base has a tendency to lean a little bit towards the green side. So when I'm looking at when I did my sketch, I don't know if you can see it, but I put a little bit of like where the shadows are going to come in to play. Of course, I lean around through the eyes and the back side. Here in this sketch, I showed how the face is about one third, one third, one third. The forehead's one third. And then the triangle between the eyes is about one third. And then the spacing between the two eyes are usually about the same space as the size of the eye. So that's my first step, is I'm just going to go in and laying in, going around my eye. Here I've um, primed the canvas before starting with gesso that I mixed with a gray color before adding it on. Gesso has chalk in it um, and it'll give it a better substrate for the oils to hold on to but it's very scratchy when you're working on it. So um, if you hear those scratchy sounds in the background, that's the sounds of the gesso on a rough uh, canvas. Most of this video I've sped up a little bit um, so that it just kind of goes faster. This will be laying in kind of like you're doing um, an undertone in a black and white and then going back over and laying in your colors. And I always try to keep a light spot of where my lights are at. Now, when I go in and put the lips in, I'm going to want to warm those up a little bit, so I'm going to use my little darker tone here and warm it up just a little bit. I should clean my brush out. Okay, now um, after I kind of have a little bit of an outline of what's going on, I switch over instead of my you know bigger brushes just to kind of rough it in. Um, I switch over to smaller brushes.
I can see that I'm crooked in this little mouth. So I want to bring this back down here. So I'm going to put in some of her hair, but her hair in here has a little bit more of that red tones in it. So I'm going to go back into my reds and my burnt umber, mix it in with that dark tone I created. Here I'm just blending a little bit of that edge of that hair with the dark tone, giving that darker shadow on that side and then blending in the hairline a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to go back in with a little bit more of a fleshy kind of a yellow tone um, over top of this green tone. And it's kind of at the base between, for me anyway, people see different things. nose is too flat, doesn't have any dimension to it, so I need to bring some of this in.
here I'll add a little bit of sap green um, to add to some of my mixture for the iris or in the color that's in the eye. Here I add a little bit more light um, back to the eyelid just to accent the depth of the eye. Some of these brushes you'll see me using um, with the lighter handles, they're actually makeup brushes that my daughter had, and I find them really useful for blending. Um, you just have to make sure that they don't lose any hairs, so um, if you choose to use makeup brushes, just make sure that they don't leave little specks of their hairs onto your oils. point sometimes you can just let it dry and then go back in but for this video we just went right directly back in over top of the um, wet paint instead of letting it dry and then doing thin layers of glaze coats
was editing this video on the computer, I can see that the corner of my mouth on this left eye should have lined up with my iris straight down, and I'm a little bit narrow from that, a little bit off. It should have come over a little bit further. Thank you for watching. I'm doing a portrait of my daughter, and I want to thank my daughter Kelsey for me using her Facebook page um, photo um, to do this quick portrait. I hope you enjoy. Thank you very much for watching. Here's the iPad photo. This is the iPad photo um, that I took the photograph.